Flip doll, ball jointed doll, or smart doll. Are any of these dolls better individually than any of the other dolls? Well, first up, let's look at their price points so you have an idea of how much each of these dolls are worth. Now, this is the price point of the doll with what the doll comes with when you get her out of the box, so her stock outfit included. This outfit on her is not her stock outfit. This is from Arika doll, and this bathing suit is also not her stock outfit. Now, each of these dolls are very different and have different features about them. When choosing your first doll or when choosing one of these dolls, it's good to know the posability as well as just the overall impact that the doll has in its playtime. Now, I didn't even know that Smart Doll and Delphi Dream weren't ball jointed dolls. The reason why I don't have a Delphi Dream doll in this video is because I want to focus on these four dolls, but also I wanted to include Smart Doll because she does come with her stand, which is of immense value. I absolutely love the stand. If you really want to get into doll photography, the stand is easy to edit out and it travels well and it just pops into her back. At first I thought, oh, this is a little strange. It pops into the back and there's a big hole in her backside. But in hindsight, it is very valuable. When you are traveling with your doll, you can just pull the stand out. She pretty much can pose anywhere with this stand. Again, it's very easy to edit out. This stand did not come with this Fairy Castle 1-4 scale doll. I did have to buy this stand separately. So these are my two ball jointed dolls that I have. And this girl who is a Mystic Kids doll, she is a 1-3 scale doll. She also didn't come with a stand. Now, in terms of posability, the ball jointed dolls, I think have great posability, but they don't have as much range of motion as the smart doll and they are limited. What keeps them together is their strings. And so there's only kind of a certain way that they can pose and you couldn't necessarily put like just a soft bend in her knee. As you can see, it just kind of goes, as soon as I push the leg here, the leg just swings right up. So it's not like I can put like a soft little bend in her knee. There isn't a stiffness in the joints because it is string that's on the inside. But she is still poseable. As you can see, her knee can go, you know, in and out. And I can get her standing up. Now she <laughs> wants to sit down. Her arms only go up so far, but you go all the way back. It's not like I can put just a soft bend in her arm and then have her arm in a very specific position, but yeah, I can get her in a fifth position here, fifth ballet position, which is nice. Okay, there we go. Oh, there we go. Bring this arm up. So they do still have quite a bit of posability, the ankles. Let's just try to get her back to the way that she was. Now with dimension here, as you can see, her joints have, they're more like a ball socket joint, which is funny because they're like a true joint of a human being. So even though these are called ball jointed dolls, which they do have, you know, also little ball joints, they're strung together by string. Like this is a true like ball and socket this ball goes into this socket and so therefore I can position her arm and it doesn't have that recoil and that snap back. She can really take more poses here and she does have more stability. Now, for example, when I bend her knee, it just stays right like that because each of her joints have their own stiffness to them. Again, a ball jointed doll is gonna be different I find that this girl is a little bit more sturdy than her. So when I bend her leg, it does kind of stay in that position. It doesn't just fluff right up. But again, it's just also the design of this doll is a little different from this doll. Now look, her leg kind of <laughs> just came right undone there. So it doesn't seem like I can really rotate the legs too much. Oh, but I can rotate here. So there we go. Every ball jointed doll is going to have a little bit different posability. But again, it just gets a little bit trickier. As I fiddle around with her, I can already see 
that she will rely on her stand for some poses, whereas you can freestand a smart doll all on her own. There is something pretty traditional and magical about having a doll that has strings on the inside of her. It seems almost like she was more so handcrafted or, or handmade, although smart dolls are also handcrafted and handmade as well. It seems like fur joints are not as like, uh, flimsy may not be the word, but they don't have as much of that just kind of erratic flip it and flippant nature as the Mystic Kids doll does. So I would already say that she has a, a little bit more value to her. She's a little bit uh, better constructed. Let's see if she can take that fifth position. Oh, almost, almost. There we go. And then we have Pull Up Doll. This is Pull Up Dilettante, and she is the most economical of the four. She's the most affordable amongst these four. Now, of course, she is plastic. These dolls are a resin or a vinyl. Most ball jointed dolls are kind of a type of resin. Smart doll is a vinyl doll. She's made out of vinyl and poured into a cast mold. Now, Dilettante also has mobility in her joints, her wrists, her knees, her hips. Okay, and what I love about the pull-up dolls is they all have their own type of style. So they come with sometimes two pairs of shoes. This girl came with two pairs of shoes. She also came with a lovely jacket. And she comes with this three-piece outfit, the tights, the skirt, the blouse. The fun thing about pull-up dolls as well is they can blink their eyes and they can turn their eyes side to side. Flip dolls are just a little bit more customizable. All these barrels are customizable. You can take their wigs off and change their wigs. Pull up, you would have to actually cut her stock wig off, but then you could easily put on another wig or give her stock wig to another doll. Now her eye chips, you can actually pop out and change her eye chips. So there are eye chip artists out there, eye chips that you can buy on Etsy. You can also buy blank eye chips and paint them yourself. So that's really fun and you can go and thicken her eyelashes. Of course, you could try and change the eyelashes of these two ball jointed dolls. Dimension doesn't have false lashes, but I have seen a smart doll with false lashes glued onto her. But it is a little bit more tricky. Their faces are smaller. You really wouldn't want any glue showing. When you glue the eyelash to the eyelid of the pull-up doll, you don't really see where it is. It glues on the underside of the eyelid, whereas the lashes on these girls would have to be glued right to the top of the eye. I guess you could also tuck it in underneath, but it's just very, very tricky. So whether you watch this video just to have a look, see how they are all compared, or you're thinking of buying a doll, but you don't know if you should buy a ball jointed doll, or maybe you didn't know that ball jointed dolls are different from smart dolls. Maybe you thought that pull up was a ball jointed doll. She's actually considered an Asian fashion doll. I hope that you got some insight on the differences of these dolls. If you have any comments about these dolls that you'd like to add, please do drop a line in the comments below. Interact with this video to help this channel grow and this content continue and enjoy playing with your dolls this week.